So it's uh, almost like uh, making big temples is relatively far easier than maintaining big temples. Of course, making big temples is also tough. It's not easy. It's quite tough. But even if we succeed, it's not the it's not the end. It's it's just the opening of bigger challenges. So my now India. Krishna consciousness in India and Krishna consciousness in the rest of the world, there are significant differences. In India, big temples are even now sustainable. We can talk about challenges in India also a little later. But at least it's sustainable because outreach is going on well. People are taking up bhakti and in significant numbers. And therefore, there are, there are people who will take up seva. So if we have big temples, big temples don't make sense without big deities or many deities and many deities means we need many pujaris we need a lot of uh, a lot of people who can do that with seva so do we have that so in india at least it might be possible to some extent but if we consider while our movement in the post prabhupad phase has grown in india it has shrunk significantly in the rest of the world for various reasons and that has created a crisis. So one of my one of my most jolting points I heard from one of the preachers in America, he told me that in, in some of the temples, in one of the temples, he said that when in the morning program, there are more deities than devotees. I've heard it. Yeah. yeah. So what it means is that even if the deities are there, even the devotees are there, they have to, they have to do the, they, they, they have to just do all the the mangalarti singing, the deity worship, and so many things need to be done, and it's not easy. So, things make change, and in the future, if we, if we have created a, so it's not just right now how much pressure will come in trying to build a project. That's an important question. But after that, once the project is constructed, if things change, and uh, we can't really live in fear of the future, but we can't be blind to the danger, the challenges of the future also. So when there are uh, there are not enough devotees, then taking and then serving the deities and maintaining the temple itself becomes such a consuming activity that there is very little time or very little resources available, people available for doing the, for doing outreach. So, in one sense, while the temple is for the glorification of the Lord and that itself is its perfection, but in another sense, ours is a mission of compassion where we want to reach out to people. So, there are many traditional temples in India, some of them in good condition, some of them in not so good condition. But there's some worship happens over there, but hardly anyone goes there. And even if somebody goes there, they just it's a silent place. They sit, maybe pray, and go back. No, unless somebody is interested in giving donations, the priest doesn't have the time or the interest or even the inclination to talk with them. So there is no sharing of philosophy. There is no outreach. There is no guiding visitors further on their journey toward Krishna. And to some extent, that's what started happening in our temples also. Uh, I have had friends who have had experiences that when they go to a temple, the first thing that people ask them is, the first thing they have been asked is that, please give some donations. And few things put people off as much as that. And now it's not that the devotees who are asking them for donations, they are selfish. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not necessarily using, they're not using that Lakshmi for themselves. But that's so much in their minds. We have this grand temple and how are we going to maintain it? So then in one sense, if people come instead of being welcomed and, uh, and uh, instead of people feeling that I benefited by going to a temple, I learned something. I connect with some, a nice person. If people feel I, I'm going there, I want to be asked money. Then even then we start alienating people and the temple may start ha having and unwittingly end up having the effect opposite to what it was intended. So by attracting new people, it may start uh, unfortunately 
uh, not attracting or even alienating people. So, I agree. Um, yeah, yeah, it's this point that uh, somebody comes to the temple and then the only thing they see is various schemes for donations, various schemes for helping out something and pleas and pledges and the whole atmosphere is revolving around what you can do. Certainly, people need to be told, they can be informed, but there's a difference between getting informed and getting practically enveloped by either people or schemes or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I just uh, made a small kind of observation. Uh, this is one thing coming from a close friend who's a Indian bodied manager, but is managing a temple in the first world. So again, these are not uh, waterproof kind of observations that will be always exceptions. He says in India, people would rather give to something to begin with, like uh, a goshala in your mother's name, in your departed father's name or something like that. So, uh, like I've seen people giving for maintenance also, but he said that people are likely to give if you start something. Mm -hmm. While in the West, again, I'm putting this for observation and scrutiny. The idea is show something and then I will come up with something. So, okay. if you say that, okay, we are doing uh, like the Bhakti Center, a small home library. So there are libraries in various spots around Manhattan. You sponsor some books. These books are kept there. And anybody can just, any passerby can take a book. If they like, they can carry them, carry the book with them. Mm. So, okay. so it's like, okay. yeah, so it's like 10, $15 will buy something like 20 small books or whatever, 25 small books. So the program is on then the program is advertised and then people come up and say, okay, but if you say, can you give us a thousand dollars to set it up? Well, there is some reservation in that. So this is why this observation was made that if you start something in India, people help in the West. Uh, if you want to start something, people will help in India, in the West or in the first world, if they see something happening, they might chip in. And, uh, and this is something, if this is true, or this is a, a substantial fact, then people who want to start mega projects in the first world, they should pay heed to this. That if I ask for, oh, here is an $8 million project, can you give me half a million? Mm -hmm. A person may not be favorable. Rather, if they say that, or if you tell them that, this is a project in six phases. In the first phase, we will have a small temple room, Sankitan room, multimedia, preaching room, whatever, and uh, free food for the homeless or whatever. So this is just one sixth of the thing. They might mm. see the thing in action and they might not come up with half a million, but at least a hundred thousand if they are having that capacity. Another point is in India, ISKCON was very quick to, I would say my observation, very quick to utilize things like give donation for cows, like in Pitrapaksha or others, just feed the local Brahmanas staying in the temple or Brahman Bhojan is a kind of accepted word. I mean, it doesn't have any other colors. Brahman Bhoj, Priti Bhoj, whatever. Gita, that is Shastra donation. Shastra donation is a very good scheme because like, for example, right now I am in the thick of that uh, marathon management. The BBT gives the book for say 127 rupees and expects the temple to sell it for 130 rupees. Now three rupees, if one cent is 70 paisa, then uh, we are getting something like uh, four cents, no, 40 cents, not 40, one cent is 70 paisa, correct? So four cents is what we get uh, as a margin. Now, how come a temple is supposed to run a whole go-down, logistics, fuel charges, salaries for some specially employed people, transportation, and then make profits on marathon to support a temple? So supporting a temple through the books formula, 
I don't think any temple in India is using that. They are using other things where people gladly give. And uh, especially for a big project. Like I'm not talking of TOVP because TOVP is considered like the heartbeat of all of ISKCON worldwide. So let us put that aside. But other temples, big ones, and as I just said, we'll not take any names or mention anybody, but they're not doing so well. They're struggling like anything, as you said, for like pujaris need to be paid, the cooks need to be paid, maintenance people need to be paid, accountant needs to be paid. So this is the danger that Prabhupada said we may lose the focus. So a big project is supposed to become big focus, but the danger is it can take away from the real focus. Mm -hmm. 